Before we move any further with the Digitone, it's important that we discuss what exactly FM synthesis is. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into this, but we should have a good fundamental understanding, uh, especially if you're brand new to this type of synthesis. The FM, as I said, stands for frequency modulation. When we're discussing frequency, we're talking about the pitch. In the synthesizer, the sounds are generated from operators, and there's four different operators. Each one generates a waveform that repeats so many times per second. The default waveform that each operator generates is a sine wave. The way that these uh, operators are configured, generally one of them, uh, sometimes two, but generally one of them will be the carrier. The carrier is the operator that we can actually hear. So if the carrier is generating a sine wave, uh, we'll be able to hear the output of that sine wave. So for example, if I look here uh, right now, we have an algorithm. There's different algorithms where you can change the way the operators are linked together. Looking at this algorithm, the bottom most operator is going to be the carrier, and that's the one we're going to hear. We can see the bottom most operator is labeled C. C is almost always going to be the carrier in all these different algorithms. Right now, C is generating a waveform that is a sine wave. I see here where it says H-A-R-M. Uh, that stands for harmonics, but this allows us to change the shape of the waveform, which ultimately we do by adding or taking away harmonics. So, right now if I play a note, we're going to just hear a pure sine wave. Okay. We hear a pure sine wave because there's actually no frequency modulation happening. All we're hearing is the output of one operator, which is operator C, and operator C is generating a sine wave. Now, we can see above operator C, there's a line, and there is a box with an A in it. That's operator A. Now, operator A is sitting on top of operator C. Operator A is not there to be the carrier. It's not there to be the sound that we hear. It's there to modulate the frequency of operator C. So again, modulate the frequency. We're talking about changing the pitch. All right, modulation, we're changing something. The frequency, in this case, refers to the pitch. We're changing the pitch very, very rapidly. And by doing this at such a high speed, it doesn't sound like we're changing the pitch. It sounds like we're changing the timbre, the tonal quality of the sound. Now, how do we get operator A to modulate the frequency of operator C? Well, we can see over here we have two buttons. One says SYN1 and then SYN2. So synth page one and synth page two. I'm currently looking at synth page one. I'm gonna to go to synth page two here. And on synth page two, I can see there are two volume envelopes. One says A and one says B, and each one has a volume level. So this is the volume level for operator A and the volume level for operators B1 and B2, which we'll get to a little bit later. So if I turn up the volume of operator A, I will hear it modulate operator C. Why? Because again, we look at the algorithm, C is my carrier, that's the bottom most operator, that's the one I'm currently hearing. And as I turn up A, A will modulate the frequency of C. So let's hear the result. I can use this knob here to turn up the volume of operator A. All right, so we can hear the sound of A as it modulates the frequency of C. So that's a basic example of frequency modulation synthesis. Now, if we look at the algorithm again, let me go back to synth page one. The box that says A also has a little box behind it. And what this means is that uh, operator A can also modulate itself. It can do feedback. And the way we achieve that is over here, we can see uh, there's a harmonic box. Uh, this box is for detuning the operators, which we'll talk about later. Uh, and the third one is the feedback. So as I turn that up, as long as operator A, uh, as long as the volume is up, I will hear the effect of this feedback. So let me play a note. You can see I've turned up operator A already. I will adjust the feedback. And that is operator A modulating itself. Okay. Now again, looking at this particular algorithm, this is algorithm one, the different algorithms change how the operators are connected to each other and which ones are the carriers and the modulators. At the bottom, we can see it says X and Y. And if we're looking at the bottom row of parameters here, the very last one says mix. So we can make it so that we only hear the output of what's going to the X output, which in this case is C as the carrier and A as the modulator. We can make it so we only hear the output of Y, which in this case would be B1, there's two different B operators, B1 and B2. Like I said, we'll discuss that soon. 
Uh, but if we just hear the output of Y, we'll hear B1 as the carrier and B2 will be the modulator. And we can also see there's a line connecting B1 and B2 uh, right above where C is at. And this means that we can also turn up the B operator to modulate the frequency of C as well. So let's hear how this sounds. I'll go back to synth page two. My B operator is there. Let me turn this up. So we can see uh, by not even doing too much, just by turning up the different uh, modulating operators, the modulators, we're able to change the sound, change the timbre that's being generated by our carrier, which again is operator C. So the more you play around with this, uh, the easier it'll be to wrap your head around it. For those of you who have played around with different FM synths before, uh, the approach here is actually simplified in a way that still gives you a lot of different options when it comes to sound design.